Sziasztok! Ez az új videósorozatom első része, amiben bemutatom azt európai parlamenti képviselőtársaimmal együtt, hogy mi történik a koronavírus körül Európa más országaiban, miket csinálnak a kormányok, hogy áll a helyzet, milyen ötleteket lehetne esetleg Magyarországon is átvenni. És a mai első vendégem Karen Melchior, egy Dán képviselő nő a frakciómból, a Renew Europe-ból. Karen a Dán Radikale Venstre pártnak a képviselője. Hey Karen! Hi Kaska! Tell me about Denmark. I heard that Denmark was one of the first countries uh, to close its borders uh, as a response to the coronavirus epidemic. And you also introduced some uh, very uh, radical measures to contain the disease. But what's the situation now? Uh, you, All of our schools are closed and also kindergartens. All public workers that don't have very uh, important work with the virus, they have been sent home from work all have been asked to work from home you are not allowed to meet with more than 10 people and you are not allowed to go to playgrounds outside either mm -hmm. and we also close the borders to people from with other nationalities than danish who don't have a permanent residence in denmark and we have the government together with the parliament a broad um, all of the parties in the parliament have agreed a financial help package for the privately employed and also for small companies and companies that are losing their, their income uh, because of the crisis uh, so that they will, um, they will, it will be made up to them, uh, the losses that they have had. And this is trying to reduce the damages to the Danish economy as much as possible. Um, we have been in a very good situation in the parliament that all of the parties have been working together and also the government has been including the, the parties. So there is no sort of exceptional measures putting aside parliament, the parliamentary democracy, but we've just been collaborating together. Mm. And uh, the parliament is still in session, uh, or do you vote remotely? Do you have any uh, exceptional measures due to the crisis? As you might have heard, in Hungary we have a situation where, uh, well, parliament uh, power is about to be radically reduced uh, for an unlimited time period, as the government claims that in a crisis situation it's impossible sometimes to convene the parliament. What's the Danish reaction uh, to the similar circumstances? How do you cope? within the frameworks of the parliamentary and democracy? The parliament is still meeting. In Denmark, you have an agreement that if members of parliament are not able to be there, then you sort of exchange uh, with somebody who's going to be voting the opposite. But we have reduced the amount of people that are allowed to be in the parliamentary hall. Mm -hmm. And people go in to the room to vote in shifts. And the parliamentary groups in, in the parliament, they we meet um, via teleconferences. But the people doing the negotiations and voting in the parliament, they, they come there and vote. Um, but taking security uh, health uh, precautions to not infect each other. Mm. Well, that sounds like a very reasonable proposition. And tell me a bit about the economic package. Uh, do you also have compensations for workers who are out of job, wage compensations uh, or credits? We have, I mean, the wage, comp the wage compensations that you get when you're out of work or if you are ill, they have been prolonged because usually they are time limited in Denmark. So that if you're out of work, you can only get um, the highest level of benefits for two years. But the people that are out of work at the moment, they, it will be impossible for them to find a job when the economy is so bad. Mm -hmm. So instead of letting these months count towards the two years, then we've sort of frozen time for the people receiving benefits. Mm -hmm. And there is a wage compensation so that people will get at least 75% of the wages if their company has had to stop. And this is an agreement between the employers, the trade unions and the government, which is the way that we do employment um, agreements in, in Denmark. 
Wow, uh, that sounds also very comprehensive, and I'm really hopeful that uh, it can uh, fuel back the Danish economy once the crisis subsides. Tell me a bit about the healthcare system. How are the doctors coping? Uh, how are the cases? How is the testing? Do you test a lot, or what's your strategy? We have reduced the amount of testing that we're doing in Denmark only to the very ill, and this has been quite controversial. Also, healthcare workers are not being tested because we do not have enough of the the um, specific uh, COVID test for, from a company called Wash, mm. which is the one that we have been using to register the amount of cases. There are other ways you can test if you have a virus, but they are not sufficiently precise to be used. So they could sort of use them to find out that you have something other than uh, corona. But for the actual tests, we still need these tests that we don't have enough of. So we're not doing as much testing and, as we would like, but we're looking to increase the capacity for tests uh, together with our European partners. Yes. Do you think that there should be a European uh, coordinated response when it comes to the procurement of devices, equipment or tests even? Uh, I believe that uh, if we would cooperate more at the European level, uh, it, it could uh, help a lot of uh, countries uh, with the shortages. I think it would help a lot. Uh, the Commission is doing a lot at the moment with procurement um, from outside of the European Union. But we also see that there are different member states that take unilateral measures of stopping exports of masks, for example, from Germany to Denmark, where a German company had told the Danish authorities that because of an export ban that they were not allowed to export it. Uh, this is not true. Um, the European Commission has talked to Germany and they have stopped the export ban that they had put in place at one point. And I think it's really bad for the European cooperation if countries put in place export bans uh, and keep them. Yes, mostly in these trying times, uh, we should work together and uh, we should show that there is a spirit of European solidarity indeed. Uh, it will be a very difficult uh, time also after the virus subsides. Uh, what do you think uh, we could do in the parliament to uh, help our communities better and to mend some problems that uh, will arise after, after, after these trying months? I think we should try and look at um, setting up a structure for better cooperation between the health authorities. Because at the moment, there is no like health legislation in Europe. And I think our health authorities are not used to cooperating. And we have been too reliant on the US and also the UK to take the lead on health cooperation. But uh, the UK has been too busy with Brexit. And right. Trump is too busy with himself to uh, do international cooperation. I mean, and Trump so I think we... Companies. Yes. <laughs> I think we uh, we need to step up in the European Union and intensify our cooperation so that we are not dependent on people that are no longer there. Yes, that's true. Well, and I am very much looking forward to working together with you uh, on that in the coming months and years in the European Parliament. Thank you very much, Karen. Take care and uh, to see you soon. Likewise. Bye.